RV cabinets, building for a short person. It seems that some people that design RVs must be really tall. Why else would they design storage that's so high up in the coach that you need a ladder just to access anything? If a cabinet is tall and deep, then there's a good chance that it'll only be used for things that are rarely used, if at all. When you live full time in an RV, then this storage space is not just extra, but it really needs to be usable, even for those that are vertically challenged. In our last video in this series, we showed how we built a cleaning products storage drawer that also gave us a platform to work on the washing machine with. In this video, we show how the rest of that cabinet is made accessible even to Sherry. Sliding shelves and baskets are a good way to bring things to the front of a cabinet. But when they're high up, it makes getting to the back a challenge. This is the solution I came up with for this. And because I'm cheap, it really doesn't cost that much. I reused some of the parts from the old shelf and from some of the drawers that I pulled out of this cabinet. And most of the plywood came from the drawer project itself. I even painted the panels at the same time as the drawer. I started by removing the old shelves and other parts of the old cabinet. With the old stuff out of the way, I needed to build out the sides like I did for the drawers. But in order to have the new shelves capable of holding a lot of weight, the top of the panels had to be mounted to the other side of the panel from the bottom. I built this plywood brace that has the upper slides already attached, and this would go to the top of the cabinet. This is because the slides would not be accessible with the brace installed. This design puts the lateral force side to side on the upper slide and brace, and the vertical force on the lower slide that's attached to the side of the cabinet. Putting the upper brace in the right spot to Took some effort, but with a clamp to hold it in place, I could then attach it to the ceiling. I just happened to find the aluminum roof support on my first try. Then I attached the brace to the back of the cabinet face frame. With the brace installed, I put the slide on the panel and positioned it at the bottom of the panel. Then I attached the slide to the built up part of the cabinet wall. I then attached the original shelf standards to the panel. The wire shelf started off as 48 inches long and 12 inches deep. I cut it in half to 24 inches each, so I got two shelves out of a 48 inch long shelf. My bolt cutters worked well to cut the shelf in two. The bottom brackets were from the original shelf and the upper ones were only a couple of bucks. The shelves on this side are 12 inches deep. This left space on the other side of about nine inches. This is too small for most shelves that are commercially available. So I ordered this three basket rack from Amazon and it fit perfectly on the panel. Now we have shelves on both sides of the cabinet and I can reach all the way to the top shelf on both sides and all the way to the back without having to use a step stool or ladder. Now for Sherry, this means that she can reach everything with just a single step on a step stool. Uh, whereas the previous shelf, she couldn't even see. Come back for our next video in this series to see how I make the door for the front of this cabinet that not only covers up the laundry space, but also provides ventilation for the washing machine. Thanks for watching our video. If you like what you see, press the like button below and subscribe. And also check out our other videos.